And hi and welcome everyone to Norse Nation. As the calendar turns to 2015, we return to the cozy confines of the Mellow Mushroom Pizza Place uh, in Wilder for the first of what will be eight programs. Norse Nation as we talk NKU basketball. I'm Jim Kelch along with the coach Steve Moeller. Dave Beasel is here. We'll have him for the first 30 minutes. Uh, Don Plitzelwhite, the head coach of the women's team, will be with us for the second half hour. We're in the back room at the Mellow Mushroom Wilder, and we have a packed house. We have uh, most of the men's team here, most of the women's team here, and we welcome everybody down to the Mellow Mushroom Pizza location here in Wilder. Steve, you have been you have been chomping at the bit to get back down here for the last three or four weeks, and so you're finally here. It's, uh, I'll tell you what, I like good pizza, and this is the best pizza in town, and uh, a lot of liquid libation, and, uh, and fans need to come on down, talk some hoops, and enjoy uh, great food and a great atmosphere. Well, we have a packed house, as I mentioned down here. We're going to talk men's basketball. We're going to talk women's basketball in terms of NKU. The men and the women both played, and uh, unfortunately both lost on Saturday at the Bank of Kentucky Center. Dave Beasel's club will take a record of six wins and nine losses into the game on Saturday down in Nashville against Lipscomb. Uh, Coach Plitzelwhite's team will play tomorrow night. We'll get into more of that in the second half hour of tonight's show. Her team will take a mark of eight wins and six losses into, into that one. Steve, this is the, uh, the third year of Division I play for NKU. Six and nine, as we mentioned, but boy, there have been a couple of games. The one up at Youngstown State comes to mind. The one Saturday here against Toledo comes to mind. Down there at Chattanooga was a game that uh, certainly through the first half looked like it was a very winnable game. I don't think it's a stretch to say this team could be nine and six had they gotten a break either uh, in one of those couple of places. No, you're absolutely right, um, if and buts. But, uh, you sure. know, now comes now comes the real test. Now comes the conference season. And uh, Coach Beasold's going to have his hands full here. We travel to Lipscomb on Saturday, come back home, play Kennesaw on Wednesday, and then hit the road for the long bus ride to uh, upstate on Saturday. So tough three-game stretch, two on the road, one at home. But uh, tell you what, <clears throat> we told Coach after the game the other night, the second half or the first half against Toledo the other evening, the best half of basketball I've seen Northern Kentucky play since uh, we began the probation period to become Division One. That is just an outstanding game offensively, deep, smothering, suffocating defense in the first half. Well, let's bring uh, Coach Beasel in. Dave, good to have you alongside for another year down here. I know you've done this any number of years uh, on different stations. We're glad to have you here on iHeartRadio, and uh, welcome back to a packed house down here at Mellow Mushroom. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure to be here. We're excited. Now, listen, uh, we talked about your team's record, nine, uh, six wins, nine losses, 15 games, and, and uh, you and I have talked about this before. One of the biggest challenges for your program and for uh, Coach Plitzelwhite's program going into this year was scheduling games because the A Sun went from 10 teams to eight teams. So all of a sudden, you've got four dates that you have to fill. That's uh, not an easy t uh, task, is it? Well, it's not an easy task. And then to find those home games is even harder. And then when you, th those four games were stretched out in January and, and February. And now all of a sudden, you've got to take them and stick them in November and December in a very tight window. Um, and then you throw finals in there and some other things. And, and so it was really difficult. Um, to, to get those games squeezed in. And when you did squeeze them in, what it did was also it limited practice days that you usually had uh, in previous years to make your team better. And a lot of those fell over um, break and things where all of a sudden you would have six, seven days in between or maybe five days in between games. We had two probably and sometimes three. So um, it was a little different that way this year, but it was, it was, it was a difficult task. But um, Kevin Chappelle did a heck of a job uh, put a piece in our schedule together. You know, there really was, and you talked about it at the time, no real Christmas break for your team. You went up to Youngstown State. They hadn't played in 12 days. Your team gets a grand total of, what, a day and a half, two days between the game on the, uh, the 22nd and the game coming back on the 27th. You had to get back to practice. So uh, because of that uh, scheduling, you really were in a tough bind with those guys, weren't you? Well, it was difficult, but th those are a lot of sacrifices these kids make. Um, they, they were off for 12 days and played us. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, and also Toledo. Toledo played two games in 15 days where we had been, I think we played five. So mm -hmm. um, that's, what that, that's what the scheduling did to us when we lost East Tennessee State and Mercer out of the conference. Well, I asked Steve, and uh, we'll ask you, uh, his overall view of the first 15 games. What is your thought uh, as you head into uh, the conference season after 15 games about your team? 
I think we're excited about it because we've shown a lot of different things that we're going to be able to do. Um, now it's uh, the, the thing, Dante Jackson, my assistant, uh, had a tremendous line uh, before the Toledo game. He said, let's complete a game. Let's complete it. And I, I think we've seen great pieces um, throughout the year so far from our team. And we led for 39 minutes and 59 and a half seconds. And, and we didn't complete it. But I think that's what's exciting about this group is there's still a lot of growth in them. And we're going to complete the games. We're going to complete the big ones in, in the conference season. And the exciting part about the conference, I think all of our guys are so excited about it. Now there's something at the end of the conference. There's a tournament. And, and that's vital because you're a competitor. And competitors want to compete and have a chance for championships. And this year we do. And I, I think that with our conference or, and with our schedule, how tough it was this year, I think it really prepared us uh, for what we're going to have to do through the conference. Coach, following that same thread, we've, we've had our uh, – Cruise through the uh, Big Ten. We had Wisconsin, we had Nebraska, we had Northwestern, we got West Virginia out of the uh, Big 12. You put together in each one of those ball games very good stretches, just like Saturday night, a good stretch. And like you said, let's, let's get to the conference and let's put the whole thing together. We didn't miss by much Saturday night, but now that nine and six doesn't mean anything anymore and kids, Kids want to get busy in the conference. Let's get started. Let's uh, make a run in the conference tournament and uh, play in one of those other tournaments at the end. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we talked about before today's practice, that that chapter's over, now it's conference. The next chapter's beginning. And there's one more after that, 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 that the tournament. And I think our guys are really ready for that. The thing we do need to do is kind of stay a little healthy with some banged up things. And all of a sudden it seems like we're, we get a little uh, rhythm going within our lineup and some things going on. And then all of a sudden somebody's removed from a sickness or something else that's going on too. That's tough when it, we, we know here in Cincinnati about uh, playing hurt and guys that can't uh, answer the bell, uh, a.k.a. yesterday. But, uh, oh, well. Well, listen, I know going down to Lipscomb, they're really tough. They got nine of their 11 guys. They got nine guys back from last year's ball club. They got two kids that, uh, well, one, uh, Martin Smith picked first team all conference preseason along with Bernard Thompson and Comer from Florida Gulf Coast and Dallas Moore from North Florida and uh, Ty Green from upstate. They got two kids coming back in Hampton and Williams that made the all freshman team last year, plus Martin Smith's twin, Malcolm, and a fifth-year transfer from right down the boulevard, Belmont, in the lane kid. So, I mean, it's going to be tough down there at Allen Arena. Oh, absolutely. Their, their team last year gained a lot of confidence. They won a lot of very close games. That was, it was really interesting. They won, I believe, seven games in the last minute of the game, and we, we lost seven games in the last minute. But I think our guys are a year older um, with the addition of Chad back. Um, I know the Smiths really gave us some issues defensively. That we, you know, they got to the free throw line so many times. I think Jad gives us that, you know, bigger body to help defend those with a lot more confidence and things like that. So it's going to be a great test for us, an opportunity to go on the road and come off a game where we should be confident, even though we didn't win it, um, play with a lot of confidence down there. And if we can get one on the road to start the conference season like we have in the past, um, it would be huge for us. Yep. Allen Arena can be a tough place to play in Nashville. The first thing that we noticed a couple of years ago when we went down to the first time is it's so darn dark down there. D do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I, I felt like I was back in Kenosha, Wisconsin at Parkside. <laughs> it was so dark. Uh, but it is. It's a very dark arena. And fortunately enough, the day before we'll go down and practice, so hopefully we'll get adjusted to it a little bit. But it's a great shooter's gym. Um, and I, I know that. and Our kids know that. But uh, And again, it is. It's one of the darker places we'll see. You owe them, don't you? I mean, they beat you pretty handily two years ago. Last year, they pulled one out at the end after you guys had a great start to the game. So it seems like NKU owes Lipscomb something down there in Nashville. Yeah, there's a few teams in the conference, yeah. Will, and we're going to collect this year. Okay. Listen, if you have a question, uh, uh, we'd love to take your call. The number is 513-749-1530, 513-749-1530. Those are the folks who are listening. If you're here at Mellow Mushroom tonight and you have a question for uh, one of the coaches, one of the players, and we have them on, we have a microphone up here. You can come on up and ask the question. So we would love to hear from you. This is Norse Nation. We are live at Mellow Mushroom Wilder right off of uh, I-275, exit 77. That's the AA Highway, and we'd love to have you stop down. What's the pizza special, Steve? Any pizza. 
Any, any pizza. Any, oh, buy, buy one, one, get one. Get one free. That's, That's the special. Sure. You can put whatever you want on them. All right, we'll take a break. Come back with more Norse Nation right after this from Learfield Sports. This is the NKU Sports Network on ESPN 1530. Back at Mellow Mushroom Wilder for Norse Nation on this, uh, what is today, the... Uh, 5th of January, the first of what will be eight shows down here at Mellow Mushroom Wilder. We invite you every Monday night to come on down and join us. The show airs from 7 to 8 p.m. And when you come down here, you buy a pizza, you get a second pizza absolutely free. Again, uh, if you have a question, we'd love to hear from you. The number is 513-749-1530. Or if you are here in attendance and have a question, you can walk right up and we have a microphone uh, set up for you. Dave Beasold was with us in the first segment. We are now very pleased to have on uh, one of the players from the NKU team. He's a junior. He's 6'4". He's from uh, Dover, Ohio, Anthony Monaco. One of the guards on this club is with us. And uh, Anthony, it's good to have you alongside. Thanks for having me. Steve? Anthony, uh, we're going to shed some light on some of your background here tonight. And I think it will um, amaze some people, uh, some of the things that you've done and been through. As you were growing up, going to Dover High School, um, explain and tell a little bit about your summers and how you worked out and where you worked out uh, as a youth growing up in high school to get better. Uh, my uh, grandpa, and then he ended up giving it off to my uncle, but they run a basketball camp in uh, the middle of nowhere, Sherrodsville, Ohio. And there's 10 courts, most of them outdoors and all asphalt. And uh, every summer, either you worked at the camp or you were playing. And what was the indoor court called? <laughs> the Double Pavilion and the Bearcat. And it was, it, back in the day, it used to be called the Barnasia. Yeah, or the Barn, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> what were the sleeping accommodations like for the, the players that went to the camp? Uh, you slept with the mice in the, uh, in the cabins and uh, bunk beds. <laughs> Metal buildings? Metal buildings. Running water? No. No. No running water. <clears throat> okay, and... Uh, how, how uh, fundamentally structured were these camps? Uh, very fundamentally structured. My grandpa would have, uh, in the morning we'd go in, you'd be four hours of skills, and then you would, they would pick teams, and then you could play for two hours, but then you had skills at night, and then obviously and most of the time you'd come back, and then we'd have a preacher come in, and he would talk to us. And then you did that for five days straight, and then it was finally time to go home. Five, five days straight? Yeah. And you were telling me off the air that you lived out there for two years? Yeah. While they were building your house? Yeah, they were building their house, so I got to live out there for two years. Hey, and we, what, one, one real quick. Your grandfa you talk about your grandfather running the camp. What was your grandfather's name? Charlie Huggins. Charlie Huggins. Yep. Bob Huggins' father. Yep. Bob Huggins, your uncle, like that. Good, good stuff <laughs> we have a call so let's go to the phones jimmy from covington you're on norse nation hi jimmy is jimmy there yes i'm here what's your question jimmy hey i was just wondering uh do the players do, do they prefer playing uh man to man or do they prefer the uh zone the what the zone yeah, on, on defense. Do the players prefer to play man-to-man, -man or does it, would they rather play the zone? Well, Jimmy, we got Anthony Monaco right here. We'll just ask Anthony, uh, if you were to poll your teammates, would they rather rather play man or play zone? They'd probably rather play zone, but in all honesty, I'd rather play man. Okay. There you, there you have it, Jimmy. Uh, Was there any reason for uh, you to answer that question? Asking the question? Well, it just, it, just, it just seems like a lot of the teams are playing zone right now, and I just um, – Usually, Kentucky, it seems like they do a lot more man-to-man -man than the other teams. So I was just curious. Well, you guys played. Thank you, Jimmy, for the call, Anthony. You guys play mostly man-to-man, -man, although you did play some zone, probably more zone uh, against Toledo than you've played in a while, right? Yeah, that's for sure. We played uh, man on misses and zone on makes. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the other thing, we, we commented in, uh, at the open of the show, we thought that the first half was the best half of basketball that you guys have played in a while. <clears throat> a lot of that, I felt, had to do with the fact that mixing and changing defenses yep. gave Toledo some problems because when they came down, they had trouble identifying what you're in, and it took them some time to get their sets going. And because of that, uh, it ate into the shot clock. So Yeah, it definitely helped yeah. us. Uh, it's, it's always good when you can throw different defenses at people and kind of change up what they do because 
obviously Toledo is a very good offensive team. Sure. Uh, question going back to your uh, high school days. When you were in high school and you worked out at, uh, at your grandfather's camp and uh, you, you played there as well, today camps aren't like that. Today camps, tell, tell the fans uh, and listeners what camps are like today. Uh, camps today are more like you get there, you get on a team, and you just play five on five. There's no really that much instruction anymore. It's just kind of uh, you get there and you play. And yeah, it's just games, right? Yeah, just games. And the same thing with AAU, just play games. Yep, just just uh, going out there and playing games. And I saw actually a thing on Kobe Bryant. He said that uh, he was more happy because he played in Europe when he was younger because he, he learned the skill from being in Europe. He says European players have more skill than American players. And he says mostly because of AAU – and the right. way everybody plays these days. Absolutely right. You know, I read that story, the same one that you're talking about, heard him talking about it on television, and I wondered what you guys thought of that. Uh, do you think that the, the fundamentals of basketball were better back in the day than they are now? And has AAU, in your mind, uh, uh, led to some of the, the bad fundamentals that we see? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Uh, back in the day, it was more, more skill, and you worked on that a lot more. Today, though, you see a lot more athleticism. So then that kind of takes out of the game of more skill because you can make up for with your athleticism. We have time for one more question for Anthony. Steve, what do you have? Well, they said uh, back in the day, the fundamentals camps five, six days long. Today, they have the, the team camps mm -hmm. coached by the same high school team, and the camps are how long? A uh, couple days? Yeah, two and a half days, and then yeah. it's pretty much you take your team, and it's, it's there's no more skill camp with the camp that he runs, my uncle, and uh, – it's just you go there and you, you play about 40 games a day, honestly, which is good for your team yeah. to play together. But 40 days and the blistering heat, so good luck. <laughs> well, listen, Anthony, thank you for coming by. Thank you for the team for coming down tonight and uh, taking part in our initial uh, Norse Nation program for the 2014-2015 season. And I guess you guys are uh, practicing and getting ready for the game on Saturday down uh, in Nashville. We talked about uh, – uh, owing them a little bit of something, I bet you guys feel the same way. Yeah, we definitely feel like we owe them one down there, and uh, we're hoping to have a good conference season and hopefully come down and win the conference championship. All right. Anthony, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks Anthony. Me. Junior from Dover, Ohio, Anthony Monaco has joined us here. We'll get Coach Beasold back on the uh, back on the microphone and take us up to the bottom of the hour. So, uh, Bees, if you could come on back up, we'd appreciate that. Uh, Talking about this ball club, uh, last year you guys win only nine games. This year you basically have the same team back, plus two uh, major additions. One was Chad Jackson, who redshirted last year, and the other is Taylor Persons, the freshman came in uh, from Kokomo, Indiana. In your mind, is this year's team better at this point in time in the season than last year's team was? A absolutely. Yeah. I, I believe that because not only are they back and are, are helping us, but also our kids are a year older. And they all had a lot of meaningful moments on, on the floor last year. And they got to play a lot and got a lot of experiences out there. So I think that even though we were so young last year, it really paid off. It's going to pay off this year because so many of them had so many minutes they got to go out onto the floor. And so now if, if we have to sub or something happens, like we have injuries or sickness or something, we're comfortable throwing anybody out there because they've already been out there. So it's not like we're not unsure of what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I was d looking at the stats today, went, went over the stats. A couple really, really unusual things for your ball club. Every player on your ball club is averaging at least one point a game or more. And you get three guys on your ball club that have never, to this point in time in the season, been to the free throw line. I, I have n I've never heard of that any place, any time. I was, it's just some, you know, goofball things with things. Tell the fans, if you would, the difference between playing one game in the pre-conference schedule as to playing in the conference, now you're playing against coaches that you've coached against before, players that you've seen before, and how does that, how does that affect your preparation and, and how you get ready for a club? It, well, it affects you in a, a number of ways. They've played against your system. They've played against your guys. Um, a, a lot of times the things like they'll do, um, we have calls, which, you know, the, the, the names for plays and things. So there's a lot of familiarity that way um, with it. So you're, you're always, you've got so much film and data now on everybody. Uh, so you're constantly looking for little things to maybe give your guys an edge, whether it be on an out-of-bounds play, um, whether or not a guy doesn't shoot off screens, you know, all kinds of different little things because now, again, when you're in the conference, it's completely different. Every game is so much more meaningful. Right, and you know them. 
Dave, listen, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for bringing the team by. And uh, we look forward to the game on Saturday down in Nashville at Allen Arena against the Lipscomb Bisons. And uh, hopefully your, your ball club will come out with a win. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Right. Good Dave luck, Coach. Dave Beasold, the head coach of the NKU uh, Norse men's team down here at Mellow Mushroom Wilder. Before we take a break, we want to invite you to uh, take a look at the opportunity to win a trip for two to sunny Florida in what we're calling the Norse Nation Vacation Sweepstakes. Go to NorseNationVacation.com, register for your chance to win, round trip airfare for two, a rental car while in Florida, plus hotel accommodations, plus game tickets and VIP access to the NKU Florida Gulf Coast University men's basketball game, which comes up on January the 31st. It's powered by Ford, proud sponsor of NKU Athletics. Get complete details at NorseNationVacation.com. Register for your chance to win. That sounds like a lot of fun. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will have uh, Don Plitzelwhite, the head coach of the NKU women's team with us. We'll talk women's basketball right after this. From the Mellow Mushroom Wilder Pizza location, this is NKU Athletics on the NKU Radio Network. We're ready for the second half hour of uh, edition number one of Norse Nation for 2015. We're down here at the Mellow Mushroom Wilder, right off of uh, exit 77, Highway 275. That's the AA Highway. We'll be here for the next uh, eight Monday nights to talk NKU basketball, both on the men's and women's side. We go into the second half hour, and we're very pleased to have Don Plitzel-White, the head coach of the women's team on headset. Don, how are you? Good, Jim. Thanks for having us down here. Hey, uh, uh, glad to have you guys here. You've got uh, most of your whole team here as well, right? They are. We're on break right now, so we're enjoying a little team dinner at Excellent. Mellow Mushroom, night before a game. And, uh, and we're going to be able to meet some of your uh, seniors, uh, your three seniors tonight too, right? You are. Pretty special so, evening. No, that's great. That's great. Well, listen, you guys come in uh, at eight wins and six losses. Unfortunately, Saturday was not a good day for either the women's team or the men's team. Both guys uh, lost up at the Bank of Kentucky Center. You guys had won four in a row going into that game. Kind of give us an overview of how you thought the season would go pre-conference and how it's actually gone for you. Well, our non-conference schedule is pretty loaded. We have, at this point in time, we've played 14 teams. Eight of those 14 teams have played in the postseason or played in the postseason last year. And so we really, since, since the early part of December, have really gotten on a roll. Beat Marquette at Marquette, came home. We're fortunate enough to beat Cincinnati. Went on the road and played Delaware at the University of Cincinnati. Kind of a strange one-game sure. segment there, but it was part of a tournament. Uh, after Christmas came back and beat IUPUI, and that was kind of a grudge match from last year. They took it to us pretty good at their place. So really been been playing very well, and I thought really played and competed with Wright State, who is a team that went to the NCAA tournament last year, won the Horizon League. And, and those types of teams and playing against that level of competition certainly bodes well for us heading into our, our last non-conference game and into our, our conference season. Where do you see yourself in the A-Sun? Well, I, our goal is to compete and to get better every day and see where that leaves us at the end. You know, so we're really fortunate now that we have a chance to play in the ASUN tournament and really working to strive to get better so that at the end of the season we're playing our best basketball. Coach, how would you compare last year's ball club to this year's ball club, first offensively? Offensively, our movement's a little bit different this year. I think that we have the ability to get the ball inside and score it a little bit more efficiently. Uh, we attack. Uh, from the perimeter a little bit differently. Um, I, I think that our we've gotten to the free throw line quite a bit more this year than we have last year. And so now it's just a matter of putting it all together. And, and I think that our kids are, are really working hard to do that. We push the ball in transition a little bit better this year. So I think when it all comes together offensively, we're going to be a better team than we were last year. Right now defensively, we're a better team than we were last year. We rebound a little bit better. Um, and, and really have, have played, I think, a very tough schedule and have played very well so far. I know you'd love to think that the number under three-point field goal shooting percentage was a typo. It sits at 26% right now. If there's an Achilles heel on your team, I heard you talking earlier, you said that's probably uh, one of them. Well, uh, you know, we have very good shooters. And at this point in time, we were talking about North, or we were talking about Florida Gulf Coast last year, and they really took a while to get going in the non-conference. And when they hit their stride, they really played extremely well offensively. And we're going to hit our stride, too. And uh, what, what's really impressive is that our kids have put themselves in a position to be competitive in, in a lot of games. And you know what? That's going to change. I really believe that. I watch our kids shoot a rebound for them. They shoot it very well. And that's going to change for us. Well, Coach, you've had some, as you mentioned, you had some really impressive wins this year against some big-time programs. But as you look back in the 
since we started this quest for Division One, probably your biggest conference achievement, biggest win was the win over Florida Gulf Coast, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They had won how many in a row? Uh, 44, I think it was, <laughs> approximately. I, I Conference you, games, right. Conference yeah. games. I knew yeah. you knew that number. Well, correct. And, and really for us, it's a matter of playing the best competition that we can in the non-conference so that when we get to our conference play, which opens up uh, this Saturday, that we are prepared and that we've seen a lot of different styles of play. And, and that's kind of the fun part about our conference. Some conferences, you face teams, a lot of teams play similar styles. Our team, our conference, we see a lot of different styles within it. Coach, uh, I know you have three seniors on this year's team, and uh, while you did bring the whole team, you want to put some of them on and get them in a little air time. So you have one of them sitting next to you. Who do you have there? Right here we have Malika Glover. Malika is in her third year here at Northern Kentucky to the fans, uh, fans cheers. Malika has done a great job, great leader for us. Um, it, was, it hasn't been healthy enough to really play on the court a great deal for us in her one game. She scored though, so that was kind of fun, but has done a great job of being a leader uh, from, from the sidelines and doing a great job bringing our team together. Well, let's put her on headset. We'll hear a little bit from uh, uh, Malika Glover, who's a uh, senior, five foot four from East Lansing, Michigan. Uh, as uh, Coach Blitzel White mentioned, she's a transfer, came in from Oakland University. Uh, what led you to transfer here, Malika? Well, basically, I wasn't enjoying my time at Oakland. Yeah. And um, I, <laughs> I mean, that'll that do it. Like, but um, you know, I was looking for another school to go to, and um, Coach Don got in contact with me, and it was just a match made in heaven after that. Has it worked out the way you hoped it would? I know you certainly love to play more, but has it worked out the, the way you thought it would at NKU? Oh yeah, like obviously, um, basketball-wise, things aren't like the way I dreamed it. But um, I've learned so much, and I've had a ton of opportunities here that I don't believe I would have gotten anywhere else, and so I can't. Malika, you're a senior, majoring in what? Actually, I'm in graduate school right now. Graduate school, and majoring I'm in? The Master's of Public Administration. Okay, and what is your under, undergraduate degree in the and same thing? No, actually, I was in organizational leadership. Okay. F what's, if you could create the perfect job when you graduate and finish your master's degree, what would it be? Well, actually, I'm working on trying to get an internship this summer at Nike, and my dream job would be to um, work in the community development department for like a big for-profit company. So I'm working for a for-profit company, but I'm doing nonprofit things. Now, uh, my sources tell me that you're quite active on campus. Tell us, tell the fans some of the things that you do on campus. Okay, well, one of my very favorite things is Athletes in Action. And it's a Christian organization, um, mainly for athletes, but anyone and everyone is uh, welcome. And what we do is have a weekly Bible study, get everyone together, um, go through a few things in the word, prayer, and um, just really try to connect on a different side other than just basketball and um, stuff like that. Great. Malika, coach talked about you being uh, one of the leaders on the team. How do you go about uh, pursuing that when you're not playing all the time, and and, uh, and how do you get the, the word across, for the, the word that you want to get across to the rest of your teammates? Well, honestly, I, I think it's been a learning experience. I've yeah. had two years of practice at it. And um, one of the things I um, always try to emphasize is letting the team know that I'm always there for them um, in any way that they need me. And so um, hopefully they understand that I care for them um, outside of sports. So when I'm talking about sports, I really do care about you, and I want you to pay attention. So. Well, listen, we appreciate you guys coming down tonight, uh, coming up here with Coach P, putting on the headset, getting folks to know you a little bit. Uh, good luck Thanks. in the game tomorrow against uh, Georgetown. Good luck the rest of the way in conference play uh, in terms of the A-Sun. All right, thank you. All right, that's Malika Glover, one of the three seniors on this uh, NKU women's basketball team. One more comment from Dawn before we, we take a break. Uh, Coach, I know everybody wants to play and i guess one of the one of the jobs of the coach is to try to keep everybody uh somewhat happy when they're not playing how do you go about that well i think malika's done just a tremendous job since she's been here of, of finding filling voids and finding ways to help us be successful she's really a voice on the baseline if you come to practice Sometimes you hear coaches' voices in practices. Sometimes in our practices, you'll probably hear Malika's voice. She's probably louder than anyone else on the court. And so I think she's become really engaged. And I think her teammates really feed off the energy that she provides. All right. Well, there are two other seniors on this team. One is Melody Doss. The other is Caitlin Garrity. We're going to hear from them when we come back with more of Norse Nation here at Mellow Mushroom Wilder. Right after this, we'll come back with more from Learfield Sports. This is the NKU Sports Network on ESPN 1530.
here at Mellow Mushroom Wilder, right off Interstate 275, exit 77. You come on down for the show between now and the end of uh, February. We'll be here every Monday night. You buy a pizza, you get a pizza free. So that is a heck of a deal if you're a pizza lover. And let's face it, who is not a pizza lover? So we'll continue to talk uh, about the women's basketball team, which has a game uh, tomorrow night. And uh, Coach P, you guys will play Georgetown in NAIA school. One of those challenges schedule-wise, isn't it? Well, it is. We, we certainly this year had to fill a void to fill four extra non-conference games. And, and really with our conference season starting on the 11th, most conferences started this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And so we have a week where we had to schedule two games. We we're fortunate to pick up Wright State and Georgetown College. Georgetown is a top 25 team in NEI Division, ba Division I basketball. So really looking forward to that matchup tomorrow. You have uh, Georgetown at home. Then uh, the men and women will both play on Saturday down at Lipscomb. Then you have uh, another road game at Kennesaw State. You're halfway down to Kennesaw. Do you have to come back and then go back down? <laughs> we do. We start classes on Monday. And so we'll play in Tennessee uh, on Saturday. Then we'll come back. We'll go to classes on one day. And then we'll go back on the road. And that's a tough trip because it's a middle of the week trip for us. So we'll play down there um, and then return afterwards, return the next day because that's a tough trip to pull an all-nighter so we'll get some good rest come back and then get back for get ready for USC upstate that we play on Saturday well you have uh, two other seniors with you so let's try to talk with them we have Melody Doss and Caitlin Garrity Caitlin is right next to you right so this is Kate that is yeah let's have her on first she's a senior from Cincinnati right here locally so let's talk with uh, with Caitlin Garrity Steve Caitlin, uh, you went to high school where in Cincinnati I went to Macaulay High School in um, North College Hill of Cincinnati yeah. You've got and, some uh, fans I think, here. I think Jared's from Roger Bacon, so we're right down the road from each other. Yeah. Down and there. you were saying that uh, your mother went to, as a Colerain graduate. She is a Colerain grad, All yes. Right. And you it's lived in while, you lived in the Colerain area. And then yep, grew up there. Um, I went to St. James in the White Oak area. Went uh, right down the road from North College Hill. So I've always been in that area. It's been fun times down there. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I grew up out in Colerain Township. Yeah. That's why I asked. What are you, ma what are you majoring in? I am majoring in biology, so I've got one more semester. Um, I've got one more semester in biology. I've got a minor in chemistry, and then and then um, I'm also doing an honors minor. So, got some interesting classes going on over there. What uh, What are you going to do with your bi degree in biology? Um, I'm actually hoping to go to um, physician assistant school. So I would be become a physician assistant and work in a hospital setting or a office, something like that. Oh, great! That's that's great. And. What's been the what's been the biggest transition for you in in your four years at NKU? What's been the toughest thing for you to do basketball wise? Changing coaches. We've had so many different transition stages from um, learning we were going to Division One. That was a whole transition in itself, and then to learn we were getting a new coach. It's it's kind of a double whammy. So transitioning from high school to college is hard enough, and then. Um, so the freshman year is always really tough, but then we kind of had a new coach, um, new style, new divisions, new, new teams. So we had a whole other like, kind of freshman year for everybody, um, a sophomore year, but that's, that's probably been the toughest part. Caitlin Garrity comes in uh, to the game tomorrow night, averaging seven and a half points a game, basically five and a half rebounds a game. But your calling card, so to speak, is your defense, right? That's what they tell me. I think um, with uh, our preseason awards, whatever, it's more of a popularity contest. But <laughs> we've uh, we got Mel and I both got awards um, coming into the coming into the season. So offensive, defensive players from all of our votes on Facebook. So gotta give a shout out to the fans on that. That was, That's that was excellent. Definitely, yeah. definitely from them. Steve, you got something <laughs> else for? Her? One, two, three. Tell the fans the three things you do best on the court. Three things. Um, okay. Wow, this is tough. So. Number one, um, I'd say like communicating, trying to get the, our, my teammates to really talk and um, come together when we're communicating. Number two, um, energy, get, get some energy on the floor. Uh, when we're feeling slow or when, when, when we're feeling down, I try to get everybody uh, to get up. And then number three, um, gosh. Teammate touches, is that, is that? Oh, blocking, Courtney's saying blocking. I think, um, I don't know, teammate touches, giving everybody high fives and making sure everybody's encouraged and not, not feeling down if okay. they're hurting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Caitlin Garrity, you were very good on the microphone. Thank oh, you very thank much you. for coming by, yeah. Now we also have uh, the other senior, the third of the three seniors, Melody Doss. Melody, you're going to have to scoot up because this cord only goes so, uh, only goes so far. There you all go. Right, you're on. You everything good? You hear all right? Yeah. 
Got it. Listen, right, we want to we want to congratulate you on helping Caitlin with that headset because I know that you know it's all about fashion and you don't want the hair sticking right, out right. funny. You always so got to be there for us. So yeah, and you yeah. you were there to help her, so right. uh, I guess she's going to be able to help you if there's an issue. Yeah. yeah. She. Yeah. Are we good? All right. As a former coach, I was a little concerned about her hands not being able to to work the headset, you know, but. Uh, T tell the fans where you're from, if you I'm, would. I'm from, um, well, I went to high school at Center Grove. Um, it's in Greenwood, Indiana. It's about 10 minutes south of Indianapolis, so right outside of Indianapolis. Yeah. How, what, was your, what were your high school teams like? How good? Um, well, I, um, it was a pretty big conference. Um, it was the MIT conference, so all the big schools around Indianapolis. So it was, um, it was very competitive, and um, we did pretty good. We won sectionals my senior year, so that was pretty big accomplishment for us and it was an exciting year and what's your degree uh, emphasis in I'm majoring in marketing uh, your dream job when you graduate um, I'd like to s probably stick around sports and um, just be in marketing maybe even uh, in a college collegiate marketing type thing sports so yeah okay <laughs> and what about uh, yours on the on the court skills what would you say are your three things you do best on the floor um, I'm probably going to have to roll with Kate here and just say um, our teammate touches, I think, um, getting everybody together and huddling up and just being together as a team, I think that's a big one. Um, another one. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I guess I kind of score a little bit. Well, you did lead the team in <laughs> scoring, right? Yeah. That's yeah. A, don't, hey, don't ever apologize for that. Yeah, um, so sometimes I guess I – put the ball in the basket, but um, that and um, uh, How about rebounding? You had a big day okay, rebounding, rebounding against Wright State, right? <laughs> yeah, and rebounding too sometimes. <laughs> well, had 14 <laughs> rebounds in that game that tied a career high. <laughs> yeah. That's why they put that's why they put scoreboards in the building for people that score, you know. Right. Now, there's a lot of your teammates sitting over there that couldn't do what you do, so. You Steve, know? we have one more minute with Melody, so uh, why don't you... Uh, uh, lead her into something interesting. <laughs> tell us about, tell us about your perception as to how things have progressed from your freshman year to now, with regard to the conference, and and how that plays into your goals and how you kind of set things up in your mind coming into this year's senior year. Um, well, yeah, like going what Kate said, it's been a big adjustment for us and um, going, especially going um, to Division One and entering a whole new conference and like with a whole new coach. It's just a big change um, for everyone, and I think we did an awesome job staying together as a team and just getting through these changes um, together, and it's been a lot of fun going through this and experience, experiencing all this. Listen, Melody, thanks for coming by, putting on the headset, and uh, sharing a little bit of your life with us, and uh, same goes to you, uh, to Caitlin. Thank you very much, and uh, Coach P, thanks for you and bringing the whole team down here tonight. We hope to see you guys again, not just tonight, but uh, throughout the course of January and February. Good luck tomorrow night against Georgetown. Thank you. Thanks All for having right. us. And we'll see you Saturday yeah. in Nashville. Yeah, definitely. We'll see uh, the whole team down there. They play, I think, at 5 o'clock Eastern time, and then the men play uh, at 7.30. 4 Central. 4 Central time, yeah, but uh, 5 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll need to take a break now, and then we'll come back. And uh, we've got some special things to talk about in our last segment. This is Norse Nation from Learfield Sports and the NKU Sports Network on ESPN 1530. All right, Jim Kelch, Steve Moeller back here at Metal Mushroom Wilder as we wrap up this edition of Norse Nation, the first of 2015. A reminder that we are back here every Monday from 7 to 8 next Monday night. We will be on uh, Fox Sports Radio. That is uh, 1360. We'll uh, not alternate every week, but uh, about half the shows will be on ESPN Radio, the other half on Fox Sports Radio. Next Monday, the 12th, we'll be down here and be on Fox Sports Radio 1360. We certainly invite you to come on down and enjoy the show. Uh, home games coming up for NKU. The women, Steve, we mentioned, will be home tomorrow night. That's a 7 o'clock tip against Georgetown. The men, after both teams play Saturday in uh, Nashville against Lipscomb, are home next Wednesday, right? Next home uh, next Wednesday against Kennesaw State. And then we go on the road and the ladies come back home again. We've got about three minutes or so to talk about, maybe a little bit less, to talk about a big event that was announced uh, late last week and it'll take place in early February. And that is the, uh, the 2015 induction class of the Northern Kentucky University Athletic 
Hall of Fame. It was announced last week. We talked about it a little bit on Saturday. In fact, we had Rick Myers, the first ever full-time uh, sports information director, on at halftime of the game against Toledo. And uh, the class covers really all the different sports, uh, not all of them, but many of the different sports at NKU. Yeah, the uh, 2015 Northern Kentucky inductees are um, Brian Jackson from baseball, Eva Brogue, women's soccer, uh, Walt Mike Kelsey, uh, men's basketball, Mark Wellage with golf, the golf team, Jessica Broker, volleyball, Rick Myers, as you mentioned, the sports information director, and the 2008 Women's National Championship basketball team, coached by Nancy Winstall. And um, do we have time real quickly to read down those yeah, uh, ladies' names? Yeah, some of those names, because they're certainly worth talking Karen about. Karen Brackman, Cassie Brannon, Kendra Caldwell, Nicole Chioti, Danielle Eccles, Angela Healy, Deandra Holliday, Rachel Lantry, Jesse Slack, Rhea Steffen, Jessica Wendelin, Nancy Winstall, uh, her assistant coaches Matt Schmidt, Daniel Zimmerman, Lively uh, Birkenhauer, Carly Case, the manager, and Rachel Pullman, the manager. And what a gr great bunch of ladies they were, and what, they were really fun to watch. And that again is the, uh, the 2015 Hall of Fame class that'll be inducted into the NKU Athletic Hall of Fame. That comes up on Sunday, February the 8th. It's all part of homecoming weekend, February the 7th. Uh, Lipscomb will be in town in terms of the women's game. That's a four o'clock start. And uh, Lipscomb is also the opponent for the men's team. That's a seven o'clock start. Again, that comes up on Saturday, February the, uh, the 7th. We are out of time. Steve, good to have you along again today. And then we look forward to doing it every Monday. Looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, so we're out of time from the Mellow Mushroom Wilder. We wanna thank uh, Coach uh, uh, Putzel White and the women's players, the seniors for coming by. The entire team was here. Uh, Coach uh, Dave Beasold and the men's team was here as well. For uh, uh, Steve Moeller, I'm Jim Kelch. Thanks for listening to our first edition of this year, Norse Nation. We'll talk to you again next Monday night.